Hello, Scorpio. This is Joy with Joy of the World, here to take a peek into the energy around you. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Glad to have you tune in and join us here. Give it a thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you haven't already. And maybe consider sharing this video with a friend. So, you're already chatting. As many of the signs have been that I've been going about through today, is when I'm clearing the previous spread from the zodiac beforehand and starting to try and shuffle the cards the messages are already coming forward so we have a good little mix going on here of a few face up that was giving me the gist of what you're wanting to share and then where we'll go from there because what has been happening is y'all are wanting to tell me where you're coming from there's this big move of energy going through our world right now that is ready to stop the charade the charade to pull off the blinders and to really get on into the nitty-gritty and move forward so the bit of the message that you had going on here is letting me know that you're wanting this greatness you're wanting these great connections but um, you keep throwing it away like you're you're wishing for what you don't have and that could be the illusion of, of what you're le leading me into here is that um, you don't have what it is you wish for. But you, you also showed me the flip side of the coin that what it really is, is you want what you don't have because you don't want what you have. And so it's not about not having what you want. It's about not wanting what you have, meaning it creates this cycle of... Um, unfulfilling desire. It creates this cycle of uneven connections, of undermining yourself, like throwing yourself under the bus. Why do that? There's no need for that. And so therefore you keep working on trying to establish comfort here and trying to bring in a sense of comfort is actually where the deception is. Bringing in a sense of comfort and uh, betraying true connection. Like you're throwing away connection, which you could perceive as being uncomfortable of someone getting too close to you, getting to know things about yourself that you're not even too comfortable knowing or even sensing and picking up on that um, you'd rather go towards material type comforts of some of you is chasing the dollar, other things is chasing relationships but not genuinely making the connection. That's why you're wishing for what you don't have. But then once you don't have it, you wish to have it. And so it creates this... Um, this jaundice, this disgruntledness, this um, feeling left out, put out. And that, that would be harmful to any heart, especially a sensitive Scorpio heart, that you feel at such depths and such level because to me you're fire and water. And you put those two together and you've got boiling water. You wouldn't want to boil away inside. Um, so let's take a look at some of what's coming out here and then we're going to throw a few of these guys, the um, antique anatomy tarot on up above. So um, let me set these aside here. Okay, so in the center we have Zachriel, the angel of memory. Okay, and you were talking to me about how you've played yourself, of how you've played your hand, and you've put it about to make it sort of a game that it could seem not so painful to your heart, not so harmful, which is why I have what I don't want and I want what I don't have. It's seeming like it's always just outside of your reach instead of realizing what you've been playing here is a game with yourself. You've tangled yourself in your own cords of a sense. And it's because you have, you're going about it in a manner that is not mindful. Okay, It's not being mindful of who you are and how you truly operate and giving your life a life that is rewarding and fulfilling, which far supersedes this. A life of connection, which is what you genuinely yearn for. But um, with Scorpio, as I read it, it's often about you operating instead of having it all here up in the mind, wondering, uh, are people going to betray you or, or what's really going on or peering in, piercing in, taking deeper looks allowing it to spread out throughout your channels, allowing it to be your intellect, your instinct, and your intuition, okay? Allowing it to be more holistic and more um, throughout the body, as opposed to having a whole cake with one big plop of frosting on top. You spread it out and you put it through the layers and then you have this not only delicious divine dessert, but it's beautiful too. And we know y'all are drawn to beauty because I got the raven. Yeah, 
down here at the bottom already ready to chat with us. But so that's what Zachriel is letting us know is lift your head up. See yourself as beautiful and divine and and eat your just desserts. And now that's a double-edged sword right there as it's coming out of my mouth because just desserts are, it's in a sense of being paid back for what you've done wrong to others, me and karma, but it can also be goodwill and good intention of flip the coin, change your mindset now. If you've done some dirty, clean it up. If it's easier to see others as um, being not worthy of trust, instead begin to look at, Am I mistrustful? Is it that I naturally don't trust anybody or think that things are out to get me? And just begin to work with that energy, looking at from both sides, whether answers come or not, just looking at it from inside the window to outside the window is such a totally different perspective that uh, it, in a sense, gives yourself permission to look at something from both ways. it and it's not like you're not having to necessarily dig through the past and go look at memories or things like that that occurred even though this is an angel of memory they're willing to take you forward and to move you into this new way of being and living and enjoying life that it says do it outside of any particular person or any particular dynamic or relationship and just see it as a principle of you know Outside the window, looking into the restaurant. Inside the restaurant, looking outside of the window. And see it in a more neutral zone, a neutral memory, a neutral territory. To see that when you view it from both parties, from both perspectives, that it um, begins to give you the divine connection that you want called a relationship. It's no longer a one-way street, which can in turn grow your trust. It's allowing those around you to earn trust because you've now opened that that directionality of flow to connect with you, allowing them to genuinely connect with you and build rapport. Okay, now on either side, both of these want to be shown together. We had differing dynamics, which was showing me what was going on in the halves of your mind, operating divided and against yourself because we have opposing energies here. It's number 17 and number 20. We've got the wolf and the swan. It's like one's the predator and one's the prey. Okay. And above the wolf, it says authenticity. And above the swan, it's beauty. That's okay. I didn't read the little words down there, which is about the frosting and the piece of cake, right? Yes, you have that appetite for devouring and wanting to um, have the just desserts, which is why they're wanting you to see it from both sides so that you begin to have something that is sweet and delicious and um, doesn't come back to bite you. Okay. And that'll begin to synergize these energies because um, life has been wanting us all to become whole-brained because we tend to play energies up to our own disadvantage. We play ourselves against ourselves or we put others in roles without even giving them true opportunity to show us who they are. And we're playing out all these projections and these roles and these games and these um, dynamics without genuine life in it. But yet it genuinely hurts or it's genuinely sickening or it's genuinely disappointing or genuinely um, off color, you know. So here, you what I see is you've been looking at them as wanting to be empowered and not being comfortable with being vulnerable. But we know you're all about beauty, which is where the vulnerability is showing up. You're missing some of the greatest delights right around you. Um, you're missing messages because you choose to be blinded to your own beauty. Your beauty of having that hard shell and that soft inside. Your beauty of having the layers of the, the intellect, the, um, the intuitiveness and the instinct. But I see a brighter day here. I see a, a new world, a new home, a new life coming in. I see you choosing to be bigger than what we quote our demons, meaning our pervasive um, thinking patterns, reaction patterns, mindsets. Being more devoted to yourself than your patterns and your ways of being up till now. Because again, 
this message was being provoked. It was flying out of the cards. I'm still trying to clear away Libra's reading and pulling it up, and the cards are just starting to fly out. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, so I can tell you're eager to walk in this new life. So let's see what's on the other side. Let's go into the beauty, okay, the swan, the blindness that you have going on here, and we have the eight of pentacles. Take a look. And you're like, oh, we don't want to do the hard work. You know, it's it's as if it's hard to trust, as if it's hard to... Because you've only seen the ugly in others because that's what you're choosing to see. Is what, it's what you're telling me here, okay? That there is beauty and it's not actually hard. Um, that's actually the soft part of yourself. Because what you're showing me in this card is it's done for you. It's allowing your cosmic self, your higher self, your perfect self, to be able to show you how things are all working out for the good of everyone involved. They're um, soft, they're easy to receive, everything has its place and its understanding. So rather than having like knee-jerk reactions or triggers because you've pulled those three energies and made them harmonize up here, you've in, since, in a sense spread out the frosting and made the whole, whole dish delightful, okay? So just trust, trust in this process. And it's not like a one-time process of getting through this and then I'll always know how to do this. No, the beauty is always a process. It is the journey. It is the connection. It is the, the getting to know. It is the relating and the relationship. It's just being able to observe is what they're telling me. Be the watcher, the observer, and watch how things work out. Watch how they come together. But give it time that the pieces and parts can all be there, that the order can be formed and your mind can begin to understand on the new layers of this new level. You are smart. You are quick. So allow that intelligence and that quickness to begin to formulate this down here, okay? Don't just shut the door of your beauty. Allow it to be open, allow it to observe, and you're going to find yourself um, pleasantly surprised is what they're telling me. So here on your primal instinct, that wolf devouring the cake, let's see what we've got going on. All right, what's well, matching up? It's interesting how these are golden and look, these are blue. Can you see that? Okay. So you... What you're telling me here is playing into this mindset has worn you out, has made you weary, it has made you dead, is what you're telling me. It made me dead. And I'm like, okay, you have so much swiftness, speed, and power, and you've got everything at the ready to go, and you have it around you, but you've taken this seat of turning your back to what is good, which makes sense on these cards that came out at the beginning. Duping yourself. Wanting what you don't have and uh, having what you don't want. It's like being locked out. I'm seeing the back of this card, the key. You see, you're telling me you're locked out of your own life. And I'm here to tell you, no, you're not because you have the key. And you're not actually locked out. You've, in this one, you've blinded yourself over here. You've turned away from what is good. You've turned away from what is pleasant what is um, of like otherworldly power and okay you're telling me you've played yourself small why I don't know we may see here but you've played yourself small you've left yourself with little to nothing and in your mind that's your just desserts and well that's how it goes when you such and such and so and so. Well, I guess that's how it is. And, and it's almost like you're smart alecking yourself. And I don't like that. You're, you're too beautiful, too divine. Such a master of words. Speak life to yourself. But Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And I have an incredibly strong Pluto placement. So I have had a lot of dealings with that planet. And the neat thing about Pluto is it all comes in how we frame it because it is a mind frame. Now, let me tell you, Pluto is a fan of being framed beautifully, of being put into an asset, into a, um, 
activist, a, a um, advocate, a benefit, a benefactor, uh, a benevolent being. It is actually game on with that type of being, but it's always been relegated to these roles of the villain, of the underminer, of the the death, the ending, the, the destruction, that type of thing. And so I've had conversations with that planet saying, tell them that I'm so much more and I'm here to be your friend. I'm here to breathe life into you. Do you see this one lifting up? And it's the one closest to your gaze is trying to get your attention. And the first magic in this cup is the power of life. The power of, like here, the lotus, the resurrection, of bringing, ha, the lotus is the symbol of beauty, bringing that beauty back into your lungs, back into your being, and awakening your appreciation for what you have, for all that you've been blessed with, for who you are, and to use it to your advantage, not for your advantage, to your advantage. Like, we operate in ourselves. We should operate in our wellness, in our beingness, of operating in our strengths and um, our joys and our happiness because that's what we're here to share with others. Not that we pretend that the rest doesn't exist. It's just that there's been like this pervading, unspoken thing that unless we work really hard, it's not worth it. Unless we overcome our weaknesses and, and we balance them out to be 100% like our strengths and we've worked them up so now we're well-rounded. All we end up being is well-rounded. We just roll from idea to idea instead of being a steadfast and stable in who we are. When we're operating out of our skill, out of our source, out of our uh, experience, our expertise, our essence, that's who we really are. That's what we're really here to bring and share. The other things just kind of like plaque on the teeth. It's not necessary. It's something that accumulates. And we're just cleaning it off and putting it aside and putting it away. Because what if those weaknesses and vulnerabilities are just temptation to try and be more than what we really are? What if who and what you really are is beautiful, powerful, perfect and divine? I like that. I believe that for you. So under here we have Fanuel, the angel of truth. Yeah. See if I can get him up, take a peek. He's here to offer us something. He's here to offer us another look um, of lightening your load is what he's saying, of making it easy, of um, helping you navigate this, this little leg of the uh, journey is what he's saying here. has to do with your breath of life not necessarily meditating that type of mindfulness but centeredness about contraction about bringing that divine power into center into wholeness into picture focus frame so let's see what's going on under the swan and beauty all right we've got the chariot coming on in all right you're riding up above and what I love here is your forces these horses are moving together they're, they're just slightly off step but their energy and their direction is the same um, you're fleeing the difficulty in this case the mountain is it's like too high of a view it it you're telling me it chokes you out there the air is thin and um, you want to bring it back down to earth. You want real pleasure, real connection, real life, like that cake. You want to taste it. You want to feel it and experience it. So you want the, the high perspective, but in an earthly realm. You're prepared is what you're telling me. Okay. And I see it year round. This isn't, this isn't like a one hit wonder. I see something that's more equal and everlasting because you're showing the, the equator and at the equator the, there aren't all these adaptations that are necessary like moving through the seasons um, it's all one so really this swan this adaptation of allowing your mind to see that way that's why it said it's not a one and done in the sense of check move it off the list no it is your life it is your journey it's all one it's all beauty, it's all life, it's enjoyment, observation, pleasure, um, engaging. 
So under here we have 21 opulence. It's time to lead. I like that. And it's coming out right next to your chariot because it's interesting. You were showing me the twig down here on the ground. Down here on the ground with that chariot. When you were telling me you didn't want to be up on the mountain and removed anymore. You wanted to be down in this earthly existence. Down on the path. Down in the journey. So it's like pick up your crown. Pick it up. Pick up that branch. That 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 olive branch, that extension of peace, and walk out, I'm gonna move it on the other side so we can see the image a little bit more. And be who you are, because you wanted to be the one in the chariot. That's the higher perspective that you wanted, to be able to drive and direct yourself and move yourself forward uh, in harmony with yourself, the two horses, right? The light and the dark, the swan and the wolf, the, the passion and the primalness, um, the refinement and the beauty. And to get on the same page with yourself. To harness that energy. That's kind of what the crown is about over here. Harnessing that energy. And directing and guiding it. How nice of you to soften your words like that. I like hearing that. It seems very suited to you. Very suited to who you are and what you're about. So over under the wolf. We've got the Queen of Pentacles, and I think I need to go ahead and look. Queen of Pentacles and number two, the Cornucopia, which is just a reiteration. Like, this is the abundance that you're bringing in. This softening and gentling of your power is incredibly complementary to who you are, and it's a facilitator of bringing it about in quick step manner. It is your... Um, the ordering of your serpent, the taming of your, well, kundalini, your power, your energy, it's um, like the caduceus, it's, it's getting things in order, getting them in motion, getting them in movement, getting let going. And here under the wolf, which had to do with the devouring, the tasting, wanting to taste it, how beautiful that we had the Queen of Pentacles in the cornucopia. You are a catch. Let yourself be the catch. Let yourself be all that you are. Don't obscure it. Don't muddle it up and, and meddle in it. And, um... Don't dumb down who you are, okay? Because you see the pinnacle is in the midst of that flower. You are a prize. You don't have to be elaborate or, or over the top to be fantastic and extraordinary. It's in your refinement. It's in your darkness. Sorry, y'all. Let me get the notification off. I turned all that off, but hey... Sometimes we still get a visit. Um, yeah, let your light shine. Let it come on in. Let your natural beauty shine through. You don't have to dress it up or dress it down. This isn't just external trappings. It has to do with like even the way you present yourself energetically, verbally, mentally. Um, those that want to be around you don't need to be sold on you or who you are. You don't have to um, exert your energy. It's just about breathing, about glowing, about shining, and about allowing others to see. That's it. It's, it's saying, do away with the obscuring. And when there's no more obscuring of your beauty, like the blindness up here, allowing others to see and to be drawn in naturally, okay? So, okay, well, we're just going to go here then. Uh, and then that brings in number three, Blossom in Abundance. I've had this deck for quite a while. And the next card came right on out. Look at that. So, you are abounding from above and below. All around you is springing to life. It's about... It's about as you move about being your genuine self, shining the light of your darkness. I love that. Um, because the unique thing about plants and the way the majority of them operate is during the day, they store up the energy of the sun and then it's turned into food at night. That's the photosynthesis. 
it turns light into food. It allows the food to be accessible. So at night is when the plants grow. It is when the growth and the development actually occurs. So it's hinting a little bit more at this. That's why they're telling you to be the observer, not be mistrustful. To be the observer and, and day after day in the journey, it makes perfect sense. Because as you sleep and as you rest, your intellect, your intuition, your instinct harmonize and begin to share their information and you become more layered and layered in your wisdom, in your knowledge, in your development and knowingness. And, and you'll be led and guided and discerned as to who to not involve yourself with and who, who's allowed to proceed further, to know you more. Over here, this has a lot to do with your, your external and your oneness, your beingness. Um, so it's encouraging you to allow yourself to be seen because if you're obscuring, you're actually stunting your own growth, your own bounty, your own benefit, your own individual self. So I see how they're putting it in proper order of operation. It makes sense now. And down here, that's, that's on the side of the future side of 23, the raven, which is news coming in. Remember the bright, the shiny, the bounty. Again, it's kind of pumpkin light here, which is what makes us think of cornucopia, of getting into the time of harvest, of coming into like October, November, and heading on into December, which has to do with gathering and, and unity and delights and pleasure and family and bonding. Um, let's see what's under the chariot. So this is what you are leaving behind. Number seven, the epoch, the pause in your journey. And it's just letting me know the reiteration of being your own own undoing. This is the side that we're leaving behind and we're, we're um, walking away from and we're gaining wisdom and witness in, in order to perceive more into who you are. And so the raven is telling us to choose you. Choose the harvest. Choose the bounty. And in choosing you, you become happy with what you have because what you have is you. And that's who you are, not having to play it up or play it down or play it off or play it out, but just being able to be without all of that, well, it's saying negativity, but all of those entrapments going on around you. Remember getting tangled in your own cords? And those are divine cords, cords of blessing, cords of unity. And being offered that opportunity of it being light, of being able to navigate this little leg of the journey transferring this energy over to the side of, of being on the same page with yourself of understanding your potential and making it actual making it actual without harm and only benefit um, like rectifying your accounts balancing your books okay let me see yeah we got a little bit of time so I love these I call these my Pluto deck which is why I'm going to put them up on the top here and we're going to see what's happening the antique anatomy tarot. I might have said that before, but hey, we're being human here. Thank you for being human. Okay, let's get some cards for Scorpio to crown the spread. It's kind of like seal in the yumminess, the goodness. Let's get some cake here. Some cake, some frosting, some forks, some plate. Yeah, two more. You want it in the center? Yes. Mm. All right. This is going to go off to the side. So I've got it. I thought so. They sometimes love to come out as partners, buddies, friends. And. Okay. This is the death card. To me, this one is about, very much about celebrating the harvest, very much about what seems like past opportunities, things have gone behind, like collecting your energy, bringing it all in, seeing it for what it really is, and making the best of it. But remember, that's Fanuel, the angel of truth. He says he's going to move you through this little leg of the race of not painting it up and falsifying information, not turning anything that way because he's the angel of truth, but it's literally writing 
R-I-G-H-T, I-N-G, writing your perspective and bringing your scale back to zero, bringing that alignment and allowing these energies to move through the trinity. Okay, the intellect, the intuition, and the instinct. It's your lifeblood. But I love it. That's such a happy card to me. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the harvest, being able to see things for how and what they really are. So let's peek above the observer, the observation here. Uh, it's the Knight of Blades. I love him. Such a happy card when he comes on out. And he talks about making, making good of a difficult situation, making light of something kind of heavy. Uh, and not not effort based, just like Faneuil. He's like synergizing with Faneuil here and with the Raven of like this is good news. This is you getting on board and balancing out your energies and not you in and of yourself. Meaning understanding yourself and allowing the energy of spirit of your own truth to begin to light up and allow you to lighten up and to enjoy who and how you really are. To be safe with being yourself, to be safe in this world, and to allow it to. Um, Prosper you and bring life to the world around you. Prosper us all. But I love it because he's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's the energy bringer. I love that. I love that. Regenerating life to your crown. Bringing gold from the ground on up and out. So over the beauty, over the swan, let's see what we've got. We've got the one of rods. Ooh. It's stirring up some juiciness. Look at there. Look at there. It's about getting to the inside, getting down in there. And um, again, while well, it's balancing out your energies, because in here, in the flowers that are here, it has to do with things that are hardy, but also those that are delicate here today, gone tomorrow. And then there are also the counterbalancing energies of those that are here for seasons and those things that are hardy, that are sustainable. Um, profusion, abundance, blossoming, radiance, giftedness, um, light, dark, shadow, warm, cool, all of it. It's about experiencing the fullness of your divine deliciousness, the beauty of life, the Okay, so they're letting me know you're not going to be relegate or pigeonhole. That why it's telling you it's not a one-hit wonder, even though it is this one thing of being your awesome self, is you don't just keep it in there of like, okay, okay, I figured it out here. We're just going to keep it here. We're going to keep it real because I can do this. Don't open my world up. It's like, psh, it's open. Once we do this, the whole thing is open because once your blindfold is off, you get to see the world in all its beauty. And yes, that means the world gets to see you in all your beauty. But I think that's a fair trade. I think it's delightful. I think it's playful. And it's going to be very um, nourishing and nurturing for your energy, for who you are. So we're checking out the central channel of our memory, our truth, and the news. All right, we've got the four of rods going on. So I hear clearly coming out as divine perfection divine perfection and this makes sense because it talks about remember bringing your energy into center here these these screws these fasteners it's like it's laying your foundation like it is stabilizing and laying out not just the boards in and of itself but the squares um measuring squares plumb lines snap lines all that sort of stuff that makes it square meaning long lasting stable um able to bear much weight you know, it, it, can, it can be a significant structure. It can be a lifetime. It can be beautiful and divine. Um, and though it shows, it says, it doesn't look like much in the beginning. It is something hearty and long-lasting. It's fantastic. I love that. Mm. I love that screws anchoring down for a Scorpio. It's focused on that way more than the roots. I love it. And it's shoring up the corners great strength at those juxtaposed adjacent positions when you feel like you can't see something directly which is very unnerving to you this is we have we have extra reinforcement there they're letting me know we got that covered we got you covered scorpio okay call that's what he said got you covered bringing in your harvest all these rich abundant colors of like the depth of the chakras going on if you're very synex uh, synexual, 
kinetic sexual energy. Senexual. Okay, new word. There we go. So we have the eight of elixirs going on here. We got the let it go potion, despair, soul journey, aura cleanse, wake up potion, and the void. And we have a couple that are obscured. So take a little peek at this. And this is over the wolf, the queen of pentacles, the blossoming abundance. It's telling you to get on board with the unknown. That often what is an unknown would be your choice if you knew to choose it. And the thing is you do know to choose it. But you like to, to um, kind of hedge your bets. You like to know what is a sure thing, a guaranteed thing for this, we'll just use the word fear, this concern of being duped, tricked, um, played, had, that type of stuff. But remember, we, we've already cleared all of that away, moving through these energy channels here of wisdom, of information, of knowledge, of truth. And now you can know that, hey, that's me. The one I, I don't know a whole bunch about, but I'm getting a lot of feelings on. I'm getting a, little, a lot of stirrings on. I'm going to go with my peeps here. I'm going to go with this because I'm, I'm rooted. I'm anchored. I'm shored up at things that I can't see directly. And that's where I have my greatest strength. So here, step in. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Because that's, that's life for you. That is, in a sense the sun rays that create the photosynthesis. It is your growth and your development, not like hard work, growth and development. Meaning your innate, innate you-ness, what you are made of, what is desiring to come forth out of you. It just needs the opportunity and the permission, okay? So right here over catching your breath and seeing all the great stuff that you have and that you are and your beauty and your abundance, we have the page of elixirs. And I'm hearing clearly about an invitation to a new way of living. It says, uncap the bottle, let it all out. Step into your depth, your beauty, your, um, I love it, your sweetness. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Step into your sweetness. These people that, do, that you do, that you're able to move through these energies and your guides, your energy, your truth has led you towards let them see your soft side, your soft spot. Look clearly, okay? Because these are babies. See the soft spot, the fontanelle right there? Um, but you're in good hands. You're in good care. You've done so much work of understanding and flowing through here in your energies and realigning them, of getting them into the light of truth, into the dark room to develop, and coming out the other side to see and understand how you operate and then, of course, with your spirit, your guide, of allowing this information to sit through some days and nights here to, to kind of observe what the information is saying to you and how to proceed forward. But I love that. You're sweet and you have a soft spot. I'd say go for it. Nurture it. All this gold, beauty, and abundance of life being light and easy. Yeah. I like that. Thank you, Scorpio, for this time, for sharing this teaching with me and this energy channel of moving through and enjoying it, experiencing you and your best self, how you operate, how you love the whole cake, the beauty, the divine, the um, mastery, the deliciousness. So encouraging us to dive in and taste life. Okay. This is Joy. I love you. I appreciate you. Stand by for now.